Why would somebody want to be a creator? Well, in one sense, I've answered this already in another video, but in another sense, I haven't. In the other video, I talked about what it is to what is a creator, right? I talked about being a creator versus a consumer. And in that, it's kind of obvious. Like being a creator means you have more power, you create more freedom, you experience more love. Um, but let's think of it this way. What is, why would somebody want to identify as a creator? So when you identify as something, you experience the entire world through that identity. When I had my first son was born, and for any parents, maybe you can relate to this. I was just a guy in the world who was a husband. I had a partner. I was a guy in the world that was doing certain things and had a certain career, and I had a wife, and I was a husband, but I wasn't a dad, right? And so as soon as my son was born, it was like this software that was living in my DNA my whole life up until then just booted up, like dad mode got activated, and it changed the way that I related to everything. I mean, one of the simplest examples uh, that I, I often use is like how I relate to just food on my plate. I'm not the typical like, hey, come eat off my plate kind of guy. If somebody grabs, tries to grab a fry, it's like, oh, you know, <laughs> like, like a little animalistic around my food. But as soon as my kid's in the picture, like the identity of being a father and that kid being an extension of me changed the entire experience of food on my plate. I'd give all the food from my plate to my sons. Now, my wife, maybe not, <laughs> but my sons easily. And so that's a shift in my entire experience that's automatic and unconscious as a shift in my identity, the idea that that's my son. And I'm sure that if it wasn't necessarily born from you know, my DNA, and, but I became a father through adoption or whatever, whatever the means of becoming a father or married into a relationship and, and I become the father to the stepchild, like it's a shift in identity that creates that whole different reality for yourself. You have a different experience about the circumstances uh, and then different feelings and then different actions pour out of you, different behaviors, and you create different results through that. And so identity is a powerful force. It's a powerful way of creating our experience of all the stuff's coming in, inputs coming in, inputs coming in, it's hitting me in my neurology, and then I'm making meaning out of it. And if it comes in through the lens of, through the idea of I am a creator, then everything that comes in, it's like, paints on a palette that I get to use to create my life with. So that's the philosophy, that's philosophy, that's the concept, but in a practical sense, when you see yourself as a creator, you don't really have problems, you know? Like you, every, every problem that other, other, every situation other people might call a problem is just, is just fodder for a creativity. It's like, this isn't a mess, this is like, I get to use this stuff and make something. So it turns a lot of these circumstances in life that would be otherwise troublesome, um, anxiety ridden into this is going to be fun, right? And when you see yourself as a creator, you also see yourself as a person who's, I could, you could say willing to take risk, but the, the truth of the matter is, is a creator doesn't really have the same experience of risk because it's not as risky to fail because creators just try stuff and if it doesn't work out they just try the next thing if it doesn't work out they just try the next thing so it's not really that consequential for the creator case in point because of the identity of being a creator you don't experience risk in the same way so you could say that creators do more risky things and they're more willing to stomach uncertainty and uh, they're more willing to take more willing to take chances but that's measuring them through the lens of somebody who's not a creator and who would have an uncomfortable feeling if those things didn't work out that the creator just doesn't have because of the way they're metabolizing reality. They, to, to become a creator, you go through that same kind of cataclysmic shift, that same paradigm shift that a person goes through when they become a parent, when they become a father or mother to a child, right? It's like, pff, everything's different. Everything's different. And so my want for everybody that I'm in conversation with, for every member that joins the We Are Creating community, that joins one of the We Are Creating courses, is for you to cultivate and create your own unique identity as a creator. Now, this doesn't mean like instead of the other things that are important to you. It's not like I'm a creator and that's it. I'm also a dad. I'm a friend. I'm a husband. I can turn on, turn off. It's an archetypal energy. It's a something to associate with, right? Like back in the day, I used to um, never see myself as an athlete. In fact, I thought, oh, I'm not very athletic when I was younger. And then I got into CrossFit and I loved working out and it's competitive. And now I got fired up about that. And they start everybody there at the CrossFit world. I don't do the CrossFit anymore, but in that world, they were like, 
you're an athlete. And so I started to believe that I was an athlete and that fed my decisions that I made about food, about exercise, about how I spent my time. And I saw myself that way. And that's not like the only thing I saw, but once that activated, I was living as a force of athleticness. And I've continued to keep that identity and create more and more fitness in more and more different ways throughout my life because I have that idea about myself. And I'm telling you, once you get a really conscious, clear, um, and embodied true identification with being a creator, every single thing you bump into is gonna be more fun than it is scary, it's gonna be more exciting than it is um, anxious, uh, making you anxious, and, and you're gonna see yourself taking bigger risks. Um, well, right now it might look like bigger risks, but in that time just taking them, and, and you're gonna make more stuff happen. You're gonna be more agile, you're gonna be more um, uh, fulfilled because you're gonna be expressing more of your truth and your heart, your open heart will be expressing itself and unfolding into the world more often because you'll be relating to the world as this is this is my oyster. I get to create something from nothing everywhere I go in every moment, in every relationship. You know, you won't see uh, a, a multiple choice uh, set of possibilities in your life anymore. You won't walk out into the world and ask what the options are and choose between them. You will walk out into the world with a chisel and a hammer or with a brush and you'll just be like, how about this? From my heart into the world, abracadabra, I create as I speak and this, and now, and now new choices are created and I get to live inside those worlds. So there's a, as you can see, I'm getting excited. I'm having a good time is it's fun to live this way. It's fun for me when I remember who I am. I, I am a creator and, and it's, it's an aspect of who I am, but I can identify with that. And when I do, I live through that. I experience the world through that. It provides me with actions to take. When I take those actions, my world just gets bigger and brighter. So that's what I'm saying. That's, a, that's why you would want to be a creator in the sense of that's why you would want to identify with yourself as a creator. So if you like the sound of that and it feels like, oh, I don't feel comfortable saying that yet, well, then there's definitely a conversation for us to be in. Uh, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you for listening. I love you. Bye for now.